In this video, let's talk about an important piece of any good data catalog, metadata. Atibio has robust support and functionalities around metadata. And in this video, we'll, we have a couple slides to talk about what metadata can be used in the catalog, what value and functionality it serves, and then also give you a brief demo of what using metadata looks like in the semantic data catalog. So first, let's talk about what kind of metadata Atibio supports. The first is inferred uh, column types. This is a pretty useful feature because as data is brought into the catalog and, and it's profiled, Atibio looks at the values contained in, in any given field and uses a suite of uh, methods such as pattern-based, dictionary-based, and statistical capabilities to infer the type of data contained in a field. So Ativio tries to use more than just the atomic type of, oh, is this field a string, is this field an integer? But it tries to use a semantically significant type to classify that column. So some examples of this are detecting addresses, stock tickers, names, social security numbers even. And this can be really useful for a number of different reasons, from searching to data governance. But metadata comes from more than just the system-generated column type inference. Uh, users can also apply tags uh, at several different levels. Tags can be applied at the most granular level of the, at the field level. Uh, and then moving up from there, tags can be applied to data sources, to marts, and also to connectors. These tags can come from user input as easy as clicking on the thing you want to tag and typing in the term for the tag, uh, but it can also come from the metadata API as well. Um, the metadata API built into the catalog enables bidirectional syncing with other metadata tools and repositories. Uh, and there's also a neat functionality around tags uh, called broadcasting tags, which we'll see in the demo allows you to propagate a tag onto other similar columns within the catalog. There's also custom properties that can be defined within the catalog. So custom properties are defined by catalog administrators um, and again can be defined at the four different levels, marks, sources, fields, connectors, and they're useful for a wide array of purposes. Uh, some companies and use cases require tracking lineage, while other administrators might want to enable uh, providing contact information to a data source owner. You can also use custom properties to provide data quality metrics and also to provide descriptions on relevant business rules or business definitions for the term uh, that you're tagging. So an example of this would be setting up custom properties for the source owner, uh, the source owner's email, and also maybe the percent of null values contained within a given column. So what can this metadata be used for? Well, one of the most prominent benefits is the improved search capabilities that it provides. When users go to a semantic catalog like the one Ativio provides, they may search for a term and get a good number of hits back but they might not understand what each of those data sources actually represent. Metadata can help them better understand what those sources actually are and what they represent. And they can also use uh, metadata, both system generated and uh, user generated, to refine their search results and filter on the facets that are there uh, thanks to that metadata. The second benefit is automating uh, data governance. So inferred types and also broadcasted tags can help uh, to inform uh, data governance policies and access policies because all of that metadata can be accessed, again, via the metadata API. The third benefit is enhanced metadata collection. So you might have an existing metadata management tool or metadata repository, um, and all of that metadata can be passed on to the sources within the catalog via the API. But then also as users add tags of their own, those tags can be pulled into the existing metadata management tool as well. So let's take a look at some of these benefits in action.
So we'll start here at the identify view. Let's say that I'm looking, for example, for information that might help me better understand customer satisfaction. A natural term for me to search for first would be customer. So I get 15 sources back that match my search for customer. This is great. There might be a lot of inf interesting information here, but I'm not sure what all these sources actually are or where they came from or which one is going to be most beneficial for my use case. This is where I can start to turn to the metadata around these sources to help me find the one that's best for me. So if we look at the left, we'll see a lot of the metadata that is pertinent to these search results that have been returned. So the first thing you'll see is inferred column types. Again, this is generated by the system when a data source is brought into the catalog and profiled. So we see some examples here of the type of inference that Atibio can do. We have countries, names, cities, companies, email addresses, stock tickers, and dates. There are several dozen uh, column types that Atibio can recognize. Then moving on below that, we start to get into the user-generated metadata uh, with tags that have been applied. So we see column tags with things like account ID, customer number, financial advisor, some other things. We also see below that source tag. And one of the first ones I see here is CRM data, or customer relationship management data. Given that I'm interested in looking up customer satisfaction information, this sounds exactly like what I'm looking for. So I can go ahead and click on this tag and use it as a facet to help refine my search results. So I'll click on that tag and I'm now brought to only one result with that tag that matches customer, uh, this Oracle customers table. So I can now inspect this source by double clicking on it and I see the varying fields within the source and next to that I also see the inferred type of each of these fields. So we see for example address uh, has been uh, inferred as street address. Now the field name addresses is pretty descriptive but in some cases where the column name may have been x27a uh, having the inferred type of street address would be very helpful for me to help uh, further understand what this data source actually is. Now we also see here that a couple of tags have been applied. I can also add a tag of my own here since this is an address field and we consider addresses to be PII and want to treat it as such. So I add a PII tag and I see that shows up. Now I could leave this here uh, at this point but I also have this ability to broadcast this tag which as the tooltip says will include this tag on similar columns. This is because of the graph that is built out by Ativio's join finder algorithm, which keeps track of overlapping values in similar columns across sources and across silos for uh, data that's been brought into the catalog. So if I click this broadcast button, this PII tag will be propagated on to every other field that has a high degree of overlapping values and has been inferred as a street address type of field. This information will then help other users uh, to recognize what that field is, but can also be used to inform the appropriate uh, data governance policy around this information. Alright, so this source looks good to me, so I can go ahead and add it to my mark. And once this source is in my mark, that metadata can then be accessed uh, via the metadata API both for this source individually but also um, as, a, as a metadata for this mark overall. One example of that is we do have the option to provision the metadata as a JSON file, uh, which would let me view it in a file, but I could also use it by calling the REST API directly. So that wraps up this topic. Thanks for taking a minute to watch this video.